We'll see how they work. Mm. Now. I bet they're still around when I go to the doctor's surgery, though. <laughs> yeah. Those long, sharp needles. Ooh. Now, the Rabbi Laura Jenna Klausner is with us this morning to look through the Sunday papers. We're going to hear her selections in a moment, but first, let's take a look at the front pages. We haven't done that yet this morning. Right, well, let's start with the Sunday Times. A couple of good stories on the front of the Sunday Times this morning. Uh, first, on the top, uh, a passenger jet involved in a near miss with a drone. Uh, near Heathrow. It's the first uh, incident of its kind. And also, story over here about the Chancellor, uh, who is declaring war on the Lib Dems, says the Sunday Times. Uh, there's a quote here saying, there's a clear choice at the election, a competent plan to stay on course with us to prosperity or a return to economic chaos with all the, ter uh, with all the alternatives. So the battle lines draw not just with Labour, but also their coalition partners as well. Mm, the Mail on Sunday, uh, the story that we've been reporting, that Caroline White's been covering for us this morning, uh, food banks in this country and they're saying that a new row over food uh, banks has erupted last night after a report backed by the Archbishop of Canterbury. He's calling, it says, for a £150 million state-backed system now to combat hunger here in Britain. Uh, I'll have a quick look at the front of the Observer. Uh, there's a story here about uh, Nikki Morgan, the Education Secretary, uh, trying to assert her own authority uh, in the shadow of Michael Gove. Uh, the paper says that he's still there advising her on uh, the sort of policy she should be following. And uh, Nikki Morgan is saying that uh, Mr Gove had referred to uh, the education establishment as a left-wing blob, uh, which has not hurt, helped her to build any bridges with them. Well, we can stay with education. Rabbi Laurie, you've chosen a story here in the Sunday Telegraph yes. uh, there about, well, a £5 million bid to toughen pupils. And what's that all about? So this is about education being more than exam results, which I think is great. And it's talking about building resilience and confidence. So the toughen up thing is hard. But I think as a parent, I know that sometimes there's a way up between making my kids happy or a bit more resilient. And I, instead of doing it for them, which I might do too often, I admit, the idea of education being about confidence and total character, I think, is a very good idea to look at it in the whole. Yeah, this is something that's been talked about for, for quite a while, though, hasn't it? And, yeah. But in a way, there's been a lot of push towards educational success and exam results lately, and that in itself can be pretty tough for pupils. Well, I think the words educational success and exam results don't necessarily go no, together. that's the whole argument, yeah. isn't it? And I think it's true. You're, you're educating for life. So some children may come out with very good exam results yeah. but find going to university very hard yeah. or find going to the workplace very hard because they're so used to getting extra help or not being independent. Yeah. So I'm not saying I'm so independent or my kids are, but I, I love the idea of a much broader view of education. Yeah, yeah. It's excellent. Uh, Want to look at this story that you've picked out on the Sun on Sunday? Yes. Um, Mario Bellatelli has been on uh, in a, quite a bit of trouble this week for comments he made. Um, on Twitter. Yeah. Um, tell us about this. So he made both racist and anti-Semitic comments in one tweet, which is quite an accomplishment, really, um, which he then withdrew. But here, he it's saying about when he was a kid in school, he tried to wash off his blackness, put on pink. Um, he painted his face. He tried to paint his face, which just shows how uncomfortable in he was with himself or what messages he got in the classroom about being uncomfortable with himself. Um, and I think that this points the finger very much at you know, how much we internalise what people tell us about ourselves or the outside messages. So much he wants to paint his face, run away from bananas, which makes you it's shocking, really. They had this banana mm. thing with the, one of the people, one of the staff who wanted to give bananas and wanted to run. So what does it say about how he feels about himself and about his own colour? And he had, there's a fantastic irony, which is his mum is Jewish. Well, yeah, quite. So, and so he's both the yeah. black and racist and the Semitic is it's also internalised yeah. and his gran her grandparents died in the Holocaust. So you have this kid who comes from a very mixed background mm who finds it very hard to bring them together. Well, let's take a look at the Mail on Sunday now. And complaints uh, by consumers about the energy supplier, what well, they've tripled in the past year. Mm. So what's interesting in this is that con consumers are complaining, that consumers are saying this isn't good enough. And I think that that voice is wonderful. And also to put a spotlight on energy, it's freezing outside. Mm. How many people are too cold because they can't afford it or because of energy poverty, mm. so and fuel poverty? So I think the whole idea that there are more people now going for smaller companies because they want to be looked after properly and they want their basic right, which is to be warm enough 
Yeah, and we know that the weather's going to get even colder. It's going to get even colder, and that coupled with what you said about food banks, food poverty and fuel poverty are so important. Mm. Let's just have a look at this picture in the Sunday Express. Can yeah. you see that on your <laughs> televisions at home? That's what I feel like when I get up in the morning. Um, but apparently this cat is worth... S 64 million because of what you just said because that's what I feel like when yes. you look at this cat and you think yeah I yes. know that that's what I feel like when I wake up in the morning and X has happened or I have to go to work or it's freezing so I think the reason that people love that cat is they look at her him and they think yep that's what I look like when I'm feeling really sad or upset and it says he has a cat that has earned more than Hollywood stars Nicole Kidman Cameron Diaz Matt Damon and even Oscar winner Matthew McConaughey he hasn't had to learn any lines fantastic but even the money can't put a smile on that cat's face <laughs> lovely to talk to you lovely we'll be speaking to you. to you later on Great. as well thank, thank you so you. much thank you.